Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to toss together a quick overview of .NET 4's Task Parallel Library. First I'm going to start with the concepts behind parallel computing or multi-threading. Just going to go over a very brief high-level overview. Why? Well, simply put, computers these days are multi-cored. To take advantage of this, you need to spawn multiple threads so you can let them run across more than one core. Doing more work at the same time allows the program to run more efficiently. In .NET 4, the daunting task of multi-threading has been simplified through the Task Parallel Library, or TPL. In .NET versions 1 through 3.5, you had to rely on the System.Threading.Thread class and handle all of the synchronization and locks on your own. In .NET 4, you have the TPL. It contains System.Threading, so you can still do things in the old way if you really want to, or you can simplify things and do them in the new way. In the TPL, you've got Task and Data Parallelism, as well as Parallel Link, or PLink, which implements data parallelism using link syntax. In this case, I'm going to stick with Task Parallelism. Just to begin with, I'm here uh, creating a console application, and I'm going to show a quick example of two tasks running in parallel. I'm going to use the Parallel.Invoke method, which can take a variable number of action parameters. An action parameter is a delegate that encapsulates a method that has no parameter and doesn't return a value. These can be explicit delegates or a lambda expression. So using parallel.invoke, I'm going to create two tasks, start them simultaneously, and allow them to complete asynchronously. I'm only going to use the thread.sleep to simulate a long-running process like a file transfer operation or something similar. So let's come into Visual Studio 2010 and just run a parallel.invoke and then here create an action. So here we have that and our action is going to be relatively simple. We're just going to do a console.write line. I really cannot spell right line task one started now we're going to again do a thread dot sleep and you know what 3500 milliseconds now we're also going to do another console dot right line to tell the user that the task completed. Now, we're going to create another action identical to the first, only in this case task 2 and let's make it 1200 milliseconds. Might help if I can actually spell. Okay, now in this case, again, we are going to be invoking these two, and this parallel.invoke is going to block uh, void main until both tasks are complete. Then it's going to come over to my little exit process here. So, let's run it. Task 1 started, task 2 started, now task 2, as we can see here, 1200 milliseconds, so it was going to complete first. Task 1 completed. When both of them completed, it went in and continued with my void main. So now let's press any key to exit. So, that's all fine and dandy, uh, except for the fact that we are blocking the main thread. So, let's just put in a little pauser. Let us get into using tasks explicitly. You can use ta the task class to do this work, well, it, it can be done with either anonymous methods, name delegates, or lambda expressions. Usually each task is spawned on its own thread. Here, I'm just going to create two tasks and run them simultaneously, just like the parallel.invoke. Same story as earlier with the asynchronous completion. However, in this case, the main thread is not going to be blocked during the task running. Basically, that press any key to exit message is going to instantly return. So, we will build a new task and you know what we're just going to use the same 
task one here. Only instead of being task one, make that task three. And you know what? We're going to do the same thing here. Only again, task four. And make this one 1,200 milliseconds, like the second one above. And then we will task 3 dot start and task 4 dot start. Now, like I said, we're going to run it. Here, task 1, task 2, task 2, task 1. Press any key to continue. Now what you're going to see is you're going to see task 3 and task 4 are started and instantaneously after that press any key to exit is going to come up. And then task 4 is completed, task 3 is completed and I can press any key to exit. Now the only caveat here is once I get to that point I can exit at any time because this is already sitting here waiting for my read key input while these are running. Now if I happen to do that, the entire thing is going to exit out, which is going to kill every single thread. So you don't have to worry too much about memory leaking in that sense. Uh, .NET is taking care of everything for you. It's just something to be a little wary of for your synchronization. Now like I said earlier, you're probably going to have to implement that. It really depends on how you are running your tasks. Now these tasks can be created in a more simple manner uh, using what's called the task factory. So I'm going to do this again. Again, same exact code, only in this case using a task factory instead of using a var task 3 equals new task. And this actually automatically starts it for me. I don't have to go ahead and separate out the task 3.start. Now I'm going to do the same thing here only with task 4 and make that 1200 milliseconds. Now when I go to run this it should have, you know what, we don't need to see this over and over again. When I go to run this, this should operate identically to this. And yep, press any key to exit, task 3 started, 4 started, 4 completed, 3 completed, and it's waiting for me to press any key. I'm sorry. There. Now, uh, we can also return values from tasks. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put in one of these uncomment it I'm going to go ahead and create a new task I'm going to use the old so-called old method 5 equals new task and in this case need that. In this case, um, task 5 is going to be identical to 4, except in this case I'm going to be passing in a value. The value is going to be task ID comma 5. So when this actually runs, this should complete in between these two. And if you'll notice, again, task ID, I can use just like a parameter as if I was passing it into an actual method. 
So let me go down place five like that. When I run this, you should see a fifth task complete in between three and four. Okay, that was a little different. But the same idea fits. Now the only reason why it was acting a little funky is because I did use factory and a vari uh, variable here. So if I do and then take a little task ID thing here I should get the same functionality. And there you go. So let's finish up. You can also, um, let me rewind a little bit. With passing in this particular five, it doesn't necessarily have to be an integer. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be anything. It could be any kind of object you want. Um, in this case, I was simply using a uh, integer so this way we could just name our task. Now you can also get data back from a task. Now the only problem with that is it's going to block your main thread until that data comes back. So I'm going to come up here just to actually, you know what, I'm going to go between three and four and do task dot factory dot start new and what was I just doing? Task dot factory dot start new. That's right, we're taking in or no, we're outputting information. So let me grab my output. And instead of using the task factory, I'm going to do it like this. Now, in this case, we're going to be returning some kind of variable. You know, make this it's between three and four, so three five. <laughs> um, jumping back to my old basic days. Now string return value equals returning from task three point five. Now System dot threading sleep get twenty one hundred milliseconds and return Now, what we should see here is no, that's wrong. I'm sorry, guys. Normally I'm a little quicker than that, but it is 3.43 in the morning for me here, and I'm starting to get a little tired. 
So console dot right line. Then we do task thirty five dot result. And what that's going to do is a real pain in my neck, actually. <laughs> so, really, yeah, what I really should do is I should take this and toss this in here. So this way I can do you can run a task from within a task. Now what this will do is this will nest, makes things a little tricky, especially when you actually go to add error handling. So it's usually not a good idea to do this, but I just want to show that it will um, work things properly. Now that result should be a two string, otherwise we're going to have problems. And when I run this, well, let's see how it works. Three started, three and a half started, five started, returning from three, five, four started, four completed, three completed, five completed. Now if you'll notice, four didn't start until after 3.5 completed. Reason being, is 3.5 is returning a value. The system doesn't know what that value is and doesn't know if you're actually going to use that value for anything. In this case we did happen to use that value for something just outputting it to the user. So it blocks the main, it blocks actually all threads that are parented from that until you happen to hit a button. Or sorry, until you actually happen to have a result. Even hitting a button in this case wouldn't have done anything because it was blocked here, never actually got to here. So, there you have it. It's a brief overview of creating task objects and spawning new threads in .NET 4. Yeah, it really is that easy. I mean, there's really not much code here for synchronization, for really anything. We did quite a few different things here. So, you know, this doesn't look like it's that practical, but in my next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a full-on Windows GUI app and show how you can easily use these concepts in a much more practical sense. So, uh, yeah, until then, happy coding.